Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So today I thought we'd do some practicing. And why do I say that? Because when I was on my retreat from France, um, we were working on some florals. Everyone had a hard time, even though they were watching me, like, you know, move the strokes on the, with the brush and whatnot, doing them themselves. And I sometimes literally had to hold them and teach them how I move my hand. And so I'm gonna go over practice strokes again on leaves and some flowers with brushes that I have and I'll talk about them as I go. But it's really important to practice these things. Um, if you're not practicing them, you're not quite getting the movement of the brush, you're not quite getting that look that you're looking for. And so I'm gonna go over these little techniques and how to hold a brush. You know, it's different watching the video, obviously, from your home, or wherever you are, than being in person. But I will explain it as much as I can so you understand even better and how to hold your brush and how to move your wrist and your hand to create these really loose leaves and petals for your flowers. Because um, I know people are really struggling with that and I think that's something that maybe you don't necessarily think about, but it does make a big difference what size brush you use, how you hold the brush, how much water you have in brush, how much paint you have in the brush, what kind of paper you use. All these things come into play, right? So I'm gonna talk about these kind of things in the video right now. So it's a practice and paint kind of uh, tutorial today. So let's get started. Okay, so to begin with, we're gonna talk about brushes and paper. I'm gonna start, and also you can just practice on really cheap paper, but this is pretty inexpensive paper. This is a Strathmore watercolor travel pad. It's 100% cotton. All the links, I have links to this in my shop on Amazon. And then this is Arsh paper. Now obviously you can see Arsh paper cold press, 100% cotton has a nice tooth to it, right? Because it has a nice grain. The hot press would be smooth. This is kind of like a hot press in a way. It's a little combination of that. And I'll be working with a couple of brushes. Number 12, Neptune series of Princeton. The cat's tongue brush from Princeton. It's a Neptune series also, it's a half inch. Um, and I can show you the difference how, it, how leaves will work on a smaller brush, maybe like an eight um, round velvet touch series brush, you know. So we'll start by mixing up the watercolor. And this is the key, mixing the paint. You want a fairly good amount of paint, right? This is gonna be kind of really a creamy milk consistency. It goes from tea, coffee, milk, cream, butter, right? Butter obviously being thick where you hardly have any water. So just think of the drinks like that. If it looks like that drink, then that's the consistency of the color. I have Cabernet Yellow Deep. I'm gonna add Prussian Blue, make a deep green. Look at that. The bluish deep green, just for those two colors. And I wouldn't say 50-50, maybe more 75-25 with the Prussian blue. I always like to go and add um, some burnt umber just to tone it down a bit. And you see the consistency is still fairly wet, right? So you get to play around with the different consistencies also with the brushes. Now at number 12, it's very round, has a big belly, it's kind of a round tip, right? It's not a pointy tip like the cat's tongue brush. And when you're making the leaves, you have to hold your fingers in a certain position on the brush, right? I always have them kind of like here, right? Here's the ferrule, come right down to the end here where it meets the, with the, you know, the part of the brush that's like wooden part of the brush next to the metal. Kind of like you're gonna draw, I mean, you know, like a pencil, but a little bit further back, a little further back. And it's all about twisting, right? And, and the consistency of the watercolor. So I always tell people, you're kind of like a 45 degree angle, pushing down, you're twisting, pulling, and pulling up. It's this kind of movement. As you can see my fingers twisting it. Pushing down, twist, and pull up. Push down, pull up, and twist as you pull up. See? You're twisting it. That one didn't make a point, so you can just kind of go back in and add a little point. This is the kind of moon. And this is the big number 12. What would it look like with the same consistency of watercolor and on a different paper? Here's the the uh, arch paper. Same kind of technique, push down, pull up. Now you see, you get that beautiful, I like it, many people don't like, the almost like it's a dry brush look because of the tooth of the paper. So paper makes a big difference. The different flower, I mean, excuse me, different leaves because of the paper. Again, using the same movement, push down, pull up and twist, twist, 
twist twist and pull up push down and pull up and twist right the cat's tongue brush it's kind of an even easier one to use this makes a fantastic petals and leaves right it already has that super point ready to go so i'm just gonna put some water on my brush and i'll grab the paint this is still very very wet this is almost like a tea consistency now and see same thing push down pull up push down pull up push down twist pull up it's all this twisting movement see the twisting i'm twisting twisting i'm not i'm kind of holding the brush like this up t kind of like this way more straight on down and pull back as opposed to the other one which is a, more of an angle this is more up up and down and you get those points and see the difference in the paper i'm switching back gonna make some more paint here so really it's practice you really have to practice so you get it because this brush already has that super point kind of has a nice angle in the belly it's just easier to just hold it up like this push down and see and pull up depending on which way you want the leaves to go you keep doing that movement twisting twisting twist and shout you know <laughs> Now, people have, well, how do I do it the other way? Well, you know, then you might want to move the paper. I'm like, you can move the paper. See, push down, it makes it easier. It can't, you can't twist your arm around like this. You just turn the paper, I just turn the paper and I got the leaves going the opposite way. See, that's what you do. Now, taking a smaller brush, let's do one that I use a lot, which is the Princeton eight long round. I had to have the eight there. I'm going to mix up some more paint. I'm going to use a different color so you can see it. The difference in the, in the leaves and the, and the paintbrush. So this is a skinny, small, shorter brush. Again, I'm going to hold it in that 45 degree angle. And this time, push down, pull, twist, and pull back. And you can still get that. You can also kind of push it on its side a little bit and then twist it. So you can want a wider leaf. Pushing on the side and twist. It's all about the twist, right? It already has the point, so you can do little skinny lines, and then from here, just make little leaves. Now these leaves are smaller than these ones because of the brush. You're gonna make more serious, smaller, tiny leaves, just pushing down and pulling up. All this comes into play. Now again, let's just smooth the paper, switch the paper, I'm making more paint here. See, you see the nice little, um, almost like a dry brush, or if mist. You need more paint and more water in the paint. So it's like almost a lot of paint and tea for this kind of paper. It soaks it, it's cotton. They're both cotton, but this cold press soaks it like a sponge. So I'm gonna try that side push and turn. There was some kind of little thing here. You can always kind of fill it in. But see how you're missing some spots in here because it's, you need more paint. Again, you can do a little stem and you can do the movements where you're just pushing down and pulling back and you'll still see some missing spots because you need a lot of paint with water for this kind of paper. But the look of that is kind of really beautiful. The dry brush kind of look, right? Smooth paper. And you can still get the cauliflower edges on this if you're just puddling your paint. And here, if it's smoother, you won't. Now, <clears throat> for uh, florals, let's pick some pretty colors. Um, we could do some pinks and oranges. I got the, see, I got the three different brushes. I want the super point, a rounder point, and a skinny longer point. Mix up some nice, get this cabinet red light just a pretty red perfect for this time of year kind of orangey red i can put some here maybe add a little i have this bright rose make it a little more pinky a corally kind of color can also play with it here and add some brown so i've got burnt ember see look at the difference again again gonna add a lot of water for that big belly of the brush that i have here and this paper soaks it. So for petals, right, 
It's a simple push down and pull up. Now that's got a lot of water puddling, see? You don't want that, because then you're gonna have these hard edges. So the consistency on this one, if you have too much water, you tap it on the paper towel, and then you push it. See, then they have less water. It's a whole thing of playing. See, and that one was kind of a really good flat wash. So you're pushing down and kind of pulling up here and just kind of manipulating it. Pushing down and pulling up. It's a little softer pushing pull. There's no like flick of the wrist. Just kind of a push down and lift slowly. And you can see you get those, again, those edges that kind of don't fill in because it's a green, maybe enough paint. Nice soft edges. And you get some little cauliflower thing happening in here. But in this case, it works. And it's just a simple push down and up, push down and up to get the petals. You can even just do some even simpler ones just by dotting it. See? And still it was puddling, so you can kind of lift it like a sponge. <laughs> kind of wiggle around the, the paintbrush. And so you're still doing that puddle. And that's why I always have the paper towels close by. In this case, you wanted a, like a rounded petal. You might have to manipulate, manipulate the brush. I really can't speak right now because I'm still kind of jet lagged, but to make it more rounder. You can go back in on this one, do another layer when it dries. It's really kind of pretty right here, what you're seeing here. On this paper, you just beautiful layer. Sweet, just simple petals. And then again with this other paper that's smoother, it will sit on the paper more. It won't soak in as much. Let's use this pinky red or this red red. Again, if it's so much paint, you can just tap it on your paper towel. And see how you just do these little push downs, just a little, and connect them. And you can just turn your brush. And you get the simple petals. I'm just kind of down and up, down and up, down and up. Down and up, down and up. See, tapping down and up. Don't be afraid to push down on your brush. I mean, you don't have to kill it, but <laughs> you see what I'm saying. I'm gonna mix up some more paint here. You can even do it kind of sideways. Just simple skinnier strokes to make those little, almost like daisy-like flowers. Just like that, right? With the cat's tongue brush, it just makes it even easier. Again, this one brush is really great for petals and leaves. Now I have a tutorial on that in my YouTube. Just type in the cat's tongue. And again, it's the same movement. You're just pushing down and lifting up. And you see, it has a lot of paint, a lot of wet, watery paint on here, so it's kind of puddling. Either you tap it on your paper towel to remove it, so it's less paint. See that? I tapped it, and now there's less paint. But look how they're perfect, pushing down and lifting up and lifting up slowly. Getting that inside point, vice versa. You can lift this paint up again. And because it has a nice point, you can do the same thing that we did here. Get these nice little skinny little lines. It just creates it so well. And for a shorter brush, Again, well, short, kind of long. Eight long, eight long round. Let's get some more pink in here. Just to differentiate the colors. So this is a little, little more work, right? When you get this kind of brush, uh, you can make the skinny ones. But to make a fatter leaf, I'm sorry, a petal like this, that requires work. And sometimes that just takes longer and you maybe don't want to do that. But then you're going to have to start to not just push down and pull up. You're going to have to go on the side, go on the side, connect it, go on the side, go on the side, connect it. See the movement of my hand, wrist going like this, move, move, connect. So it will take you longer. The brush dictates how the movement will go, right? It will take you shorter time to make all the little fun little lines, but it will take you longer to do that. And again, we'll go back to this paper. 
this is the arch paper again see it's going to soak it up already i don't have enough paint and you can see all the white coming through see the difference between the two papers you're really going to have a lot of paint i'm going to mix up way more paint here and more water it really soaks it and if it's too wet again because the same puddle you can always tap it on the paper towel but it's this sucker soaks it up see i hardly haven't had to tape tap it because and it, the paper makes it a little more difficult to move the brush because it has a tooth right it's not as smooth as this kind the hot press kind of paper so i'm manipulating it more it's taking more of an effort see i'm kind of really uh it's really <laughs> difficult right now i'll grab the cat's tongue brush Again, got a lot of water in here. I'll see get some more color in here. It's just a lot easier with a bigger brush to make the petals. Smaller brush, more difficult. Bigger brush, much easier. You see? That's another thing I was talking to my students at the retreat. Um, people generally think when you're painting a small picture to paint with a smaller brush, in actuality, it's better to paint with a bigger brush, you know, much looser, you get better kind of flow. Um, it just makes it a lot easier. So this already has the built-in points. Much easier to make these little flowers. And because it's got a big belly, it can hold more paint and make it easier just to go on this paper with all that water. It won't puddle, puddle up like this one. So you see the difference in the paper, the stroke, and the kind of brush, right? And then you got to kind of put it all together. In the next one, we'll do leaves and we'll do uh, petals and we'll create a little painting. Also, before I forget, it's also good to use some small brushes like this for more control with stems and smaller leaves. And I generally have to hold the brush kind of again in the same position here, right? And I use my pinky sometimes when I'm going to make some stems and it helps guide where to go, right? So I'll put my pinky down and I'll just hold my brush and it helps move, move you, you know, makes it easier, easier, smoother kind of movement. Sometimes I don't need it, but sometimes I do. So just doing some crisscross stems. And um, I don't know if I showed maybe on some of the tutorials I haven't. This crisscross leaves kind of look more natural too. So I have these green here. So I'm gonna push down, pull back and connect it back this way. See that? Push down, pull back, connect it this way. So the leaf is kind of like this movement to it. Push down, pull back, connect it, twist in the stem. See how I did that? Push down, pull back, and connect it. And you can use the tip of the brush to kind of push the paint around too. I'm gonna go back in here, make some smaller ones. That's what's great about the small skinny brushes, right? Nice point on them. You can just start to manipulate the leaves a little bit. Now I did have to move it around a little bit. And this is on the Strathmore cotton paper, right? And then we want to do the bigger leaves. I would generally do that when you've already made the flower, like a big flower. So we just did a simple stem like that. Just pushing down, pulling up and lifting it. Then we'll go back in and we'll use, I'll use the cat's tail brush. I've got that red, brilliant orange by the way, just throw that in here. Sorry if I sound nasally and still have this congestion from sinuses. It's a pain in the neck. So I made the orange a little brown orange by adding some burnt umber. I'll add some more paint, I mean, excuse me, water to it. So it's really loose like tea. If it's too loose, again, I tap on the paper towel. So here's the stent ending. Just pushing, simple pushing, pulling back. Pushing, twisting, pulling back. And we've got this little simple flower. Almost like a tulip, but I might add some more petals. And they're pointy because the tip is very pointy. 
Now, if you didn't want a pointed flower, you would use a rounder tip. I kind of pushed it down on the side like that and make it less pointy. Again, it's a pushing and just kind of slow movement, pulling it together. So now I have the bigger, number 12, with a rounder tip. I can grab some pink on this one. Hmm. It's a more red, I guess. Just playing around with the color. And just going to push down. Just pushing down, pulling in. Just really simple. Pushing down and pulling in. I'm lifting it up slowly. And then you have those little simple blooms. If you want to add a big old flower in here, well, maybe we'll add like almost like a sunflower. And the sunflower is super easy to make with the cat's tongue brush. Grab some yellow. Maybe a little burnt umber. Tone the yellow down a little bit. So that yellow becomes like a mustardy yellow. Consistency is a little milky cream. All right. Just kind of making those petals. Like a sunflower. I always like to have ones come in here so it looks like more natural. And I would add the center at the end after this stuff is all dried because if you go ahead and add the black brown center, it's just going to bleed. And even at this point, you see I have that sunflower. I'm going to add something over here. See, I'm just going to turn the paper. Pushing, pushing, pushing and twisting on this one. Still holding it in the same position. And then this one, little ones in here. And so I like to do things in threes. I put a small little half sunflower here. All right? It's all movement. Now for the leaves, dark green again. So I'll use Prussian blue and I'll add some yellows. So I'll add a yellow, make that dark green, add more blue, add more pigment, makes it thicker. See, it's getting thicker and thicker. And I'll add some burnt umber to tone that green down. Got a lot of paint on here. It's a creamy kind of consistency. And sunflower leaves are dark. We'll start with the stem. Gonna hold it on its side. So now it's not this way, it's this way. Just going like that. And then we do this twist movement again. I'm gonna go up, down, and push out. Ready? Up, down, and push out. If it did have the point, you can kind of manipulate it. Up, down, push out. See, did it right there. And you can put some little green in here. But sunflower stems are usually very thick. I'll do up, down, push out. Twist. Up, down, push out. Right over top of these leaves, by the way, because it's dark green. Don't be afraid. It's not going to hurt you. Practice, practice, practice. And then we can add more brown to these green. We can start to play with adding some some other leaves out here. Again, with that push down and movement. Don't be afraid to play. Filling in some gaps in here with some dark green. Just doing a little, this point is just fantastic. You can just do all these little lines in here. And we've created just a lovely little floral design, right? And even use this point to go in and add some, I'm adding some of that red color to this yellow, so it's yellow orange. And you can go in here and you add some little veins from the center outward, the center of the flower, just like this. And here you would be on the side. You can get a little bit darker, depending how much paint you want to put in there. See, this little dark, darker yellow, orange on the edge. Just another tone. You can even add a little brown. Make it a little reddish yellow. Make it orange here. Get even darker if you want. Depends on how you want to do it. But see, this catch tongue brush does all kinds of stuff. You can even add a little yellow here, little ditzy flowers. 
just by tapping your brush. Not much movement. And remember, you can go back in with the skinny small brush for those little small areas and leaves. I'm going to make some chartreuse kind of yellow, green color. Again, kind of just putting it in here. She's just pushing down. Doop, boop, boop, making those little leaves. Can have them crisscross. Why I like this bright green, it just kind of pops. You know, it's almost just makes the whole picture pop. And you can use a skinny brush and add more elements and layers to some of the other flowers that you had here. See, just little lines, just changes the flower. Just, I'm holding it like this now. See, again, closer in here on the middle part and just kind of wiggling the brush and adding just some little marks. Then maybe a little bit wet, but that's okay. And then now at this point, again, you could add some deeper like orange yellow lines in here. Like I said, I would not add the center until you've completed your yellow part because it will get very muddy and messy. Just do a couple little lines, clean it up, and then take some deep brown. I have mixed some burnt umber and some Payne's gray, and I'll just kind of put that color in here, go around these petals. I kind of like to leave a halo, a little white halo there. It's just kind of my signature thing. You don't necessarily have to do that, but that's what I like to do. And that's it. That's it for practicing. You're just practicing with the petals, the leaves, the brushes, the paper, right? The paper is different. The whole design would look completely different on the cold press. I like this smooth press, this hot, I mean, this cotton. It's not a hot press, but it's kind of like a, I don't know, it's kind of a combination of the two. By the way, did you know that, um, just giving you an extra tip. So usually in watercolor, you cannot paint light on dark, but if it's really thick, basically right out of the tube, that's why I like tube watercolor. Got some yellow, a little peacock blue, make that chartreuse green. Very minimal water. You can go right on top. See? Just like almost like gouache. So an extra little tip I'm giving you, sneaky little tip. Has to have minimal water in there and you can add some of that to the dark green here. So again, and then you can do the opposite with this one. I would add a little line. All in the movement in the wrist, all in the movement how you move it, your arm, lifting it, pushing it down. So I hope this was helpful. And I do think that practicing is key, right? And you will notice the difference in the papers. If you like that really loose green look, this one you're pushing back. See, you've got that almost like dry brush look. When you add a lot of water to your paint, it changes. Pushing down, lifting up. Again, push down, turn, twist, boom. It's this whole twisting thing. Twist, poof. And then with the bigger brushes, it's that loose twist. I'm gonna another thing of paint here. It's that push down, pull up, and twist. See, I'm turning it and twisting it and pulling back. <laughs> lots of fun, lots of practice. Practice makes perfect. So I would do this on your scrap, right? If you have good paper that you messed up, do it on that, and you'll see that um, you really get it after a while. It's this whole twist, and kind of really fast, too. You want to move it fast. So I hope it was helpful. Um, it's really good to practice with your brushes before you just go ahead and go crazy. And the more you practice with them, the more ease you'll feel with them. And also the consistency of the paint is a big key. Like I showed you with the water, you need to add way more water and, and paint to this kind of paint, to paint on this paper and less on this kind of paper. So, you know, it's a whole different variable with the brush, the water and the paint. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here. I'm sorry. It's been kind of crazy trying to get back being jet lagged. Um, I hope you enjoy this practice tutorial and let me know uh, if you're having struggle with the, any kind of movement in your brushes and leaves and petals. I like to hear about that and um, maybe we can work on that. All right, take care. I'll speak to you soon.